Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how you can jumpstart your workflow with Blender 2.8 through the help of a useful startup file. One thing that Blender lets you do is create and save your own startup file, meaning that whenever you open Blender, the contents of that file will be ready and waiting for you. But why is this useful? Well, after migrating my workflow to Blender 2.8, I find myself repeating the same tasks over and over again almost every time I start a new project. This includes things such as setting up volumetrics, building the right collections, turning on Eevee's extra rendering settings, setting up the HDRIs for the world background, and hiding it with a replacement color, along with a list of smaller adjustments. Individually, these all take a short amount of time to do, but having to do it every time I start a new project, where I just want to jump in and start making something, means it can be slightly demotivating. This is a shared sentiment among some friends, so what I decided to do was create a startup file that I would want to use, packed with useful template content and adjustments, and then give it out for other people to use as well, where they can modify and share it however they like. Now remember, everyone has a different workflow and uses Blender for different reasons, so some of this might be useful for you and some of it might not. If you want to grab a copy of my startup file, then you can get it for free from the link in the description. I'll explain how to set it up later on in the video, but for now, let me run you through what it contains. To start with, in the world nodes, I've added HDRI mapping nodes by default. Just slot your own HDRI into the image texture node to get it working. You can also rotate it by increasing and decreasing the Z rotation value in the mapping node. To complement this, hue, saturation, color dodging and brightness contrast adjustments have been plugged in to let you shift the mood of the background lighting in your scene. These are just what I use for my more stylized and non-realistic work. You can swap these out for any other adjustments that you like. As well as HDRI nodes, I've also included the ability to hide the background color in the EV viewport with a replacement color. This is appropriately labeled BG color, and this functionality is controlled by the Mix Shader node. If you want to swap between showing the HDRI background in the viewport and replacing it with a color, then just switch between plugging in the background node and the Mix Shader node to the surface input of the World Output node appropriately. What I've also done here is set up a principled volume node to get atmospheric volume effects. By default, the color chosen for the volumetrics is the same as the viewport background color, but if you want to use another one for any reason, then you can choose one with the second color node and use the FAC value of the Mix RGB node to blend between them. So that covers what's in the world nodes. Again, this is just what I tend to use. You might want to use something completely different for your own purposes. Taking a step over to the EV settings now, we can see that various effects have been turned on, such as the ambient occlusion, whose distance has been increased to 20 by default. Then we have bloom, subsurface scattering, screen space reflection with refraction enabled, and volumetrics enabled, which we need for the principled volume to work in the world nodes. Inside of this, volumetric shadows have also been enabled. Depth of field and motion blur have not been turned on by default as they are much more situational. So moving on from that, when I jump straight into working on a new project, I quite like having a few basic materials I can call on right away to save me from taking time out of the initial concepting and block out phase. Usually a good asset manager would be useful for this, but just sticking to the boundaries of a startup file, what I've done is create a set of base template materials of different categorical types. The idea is that they sit on top of the material list, and you can duplicate them to create any variations you like, and if you have no use for them, then you can just remove them. I'll run you through the different types now. There's a PBR material, that stands for Physically Based Rendering. Inside of it is a basic principled shader, along with a normal map node ready for a texture input. This isn't anything too complicated, but it will just save you a little bit of time if you're looking to set up a few PBR material variations. There's a matcap material, which actually comes from a previous video of mine. The idea behind this is to let you use matcaps on your objects in both Eevee and Cycles, and not just in the workbench viewport. Take note, if you download the startup file resources, I have included a calibration matcap image, but if you want to use anything interesting, then you have to plug in your own image of choice. There is also control for desaturating and recoloring your matcap images if you like the lighting information but want to change the color of it. There's a transparent alpha blend material, which lets you use textures with an alpha channel. This is useful for atmospherics, such as in my Cyberpunk Scout video, or even decals for placing texture decorations over surfaces. This material can be extended in any way you like, and primarily serves as a demonstration of how to use an alpha channel from a texture. Now, because I do a lot of science fiction artwork, I decided to plug in an emission shader, which lets us make the color data glow, which is a great start for user interface or holographic effects, for example. Speaking of emissive properties, I have included just a base emissive shader by itself, it's pretty self-explanatory. 
Lastly, there's a template glass material with refraction enabled. Just keep in mind that the world background will be shown through the glass even if the world background is being rendered as a different colour for the camera. Moving on to composition nodes, I've placed some basic fundamentals in here, such as brightness and contrast, followed by hue and saturation, as well as hue correction and colour balance nodes to give you a lot of control over the colour properties of the render. The reason why I have these particular nodes here is because I spend a lot of time playing with colours, however you may want an entirely different set of nodes in your startup file suited to your type of work. Now for some smaller changes. Instead of one basic collection, this startup file starts with four organised ones instead. These are labelled cameras, lighting, objects and control. These four collections are also contained under a parent collection called Scene 1. The idea here is that you can quickly plan and manage multiple layers of scenes by duplicating Scene 1 and keep ahead of your organisation before you start spawning objects everywhere. You'll notice that these collections are not empty either. I'll run you through what's contained inside of them now. Inside of the cameras collection, there is a camera object, as well as an empty object labelled DOF, meaning depth of field. The camera already has this object plugged in as the focus point for the depth of field settings. Of course, depth of field is turned off by default in the EV render settings, so this will have no effect to start with, but the reason it is here is so that if you want to use depth of field, there is already a focus object in the scene ready for you to use. In the lighting collection, you will see a single area light. This is just a matter of personal preference, and you could change it to whatever you want. In the objects collection, you will find a single cube with a bevel modifier attached to it. You might wonder why there is a bevel modifier on it, and the reason is because I don't exclusively use Blender for modeling all of the time. Sometimes I want to experiment with shading and lighting effects. With that in mind, a traditional cube with no curvature is not very useful for visualising how surfaces react to light, because the possible angles for light to bounce off of it are limited. With beveled edges, we will be provided with a gradient of light and colour, rather than a harsh transition at the edges. Since it's just using a modifier in the stack, this can easily be disabled or removed. The control collection has a bit more of a niche usage than the rest. Sometimes I like to create objects to act as points of data that are used by other processes. An example would be the mirror modifier. If I want to mirror an object across the world origin, but I also want the object origin to be somewhere else, then I would need to give the mirror modifier a target object to use as a reference point for where to mirror the object. So another empty object has been created and labelled world origin appropriately for this purpose. Now, just for some extra things on the side, I've added a couple of text files in the text editor. One is a resolution reference, which contains a list of common resolutions at different aspect ratios. As well as this, there is a frame rate reference containing a list of commonly used frame rates, as well as frame per minute calculations. One final change to the startup file is that the number of bounces for the cycle's light paths have been reduced. In certain situations, this can massively increase the performance without changing the visual quality. The values can always be increased if and when required. Now remember, all of these changes and additions are personalised to my own needs to save me time on my projects. If you're inspired to create your own useful startup file, then that's cool, but if you want to use mine, then I'll leave a link in the description where you can grab it. Once you download the zip file, extract the contents into a folder and remember where you put it. Then, open up Blender 2.8, go to File, Open, then make sure that the property Load UI is disabled in the lower left of the screen. Navigate to the extracted Blend file and open it up. Take a look around and then make any changes you need, such as adding your HDRI of preference to the world nodes, or your matte cap of preference to the template material. Once you are happy, go to File, Save Startup File, and then Confirm. Congratulations, you're all set up and ready to go. Before we wrap this up, I'll just make a quick note about external files. I'm not packaging any HDRIs with this package, which means that you will have to download and plug in your own. I recommend going to HDRI Haven where you can download many different types for free. If Blender cannot find a referenced image, then the lighting will default to a pink color, indicating to you that content is missing. If you want to disable the HDRI nodes in the startup file, then you can do that by disconnecting the nodes. You can still keep the background color control if you do this by leaving it plugged into the mix shader. For the MatCat material, I have included a placeholder calibration image, if we want to call it that. If you have your own MatCaps of choice, then you can load them into the image texture node. So that about covers it for this video. Hopefully you found this useful, although it entirely depends on why and how you use Blender in the first place. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and ring that bell. And if you're not doing so already, you can follow me on my social media to stay up to date. So thank you and I'll see you in the next video.